start the recording. Um, and then I'll turn on the mics later because this will be the last lab. And uh, I just want to hear from everybody and get a chance to talk to everybody and, and so forth. But um, this main assignment, uh, bringing it all together, I did do a lab on the discussion because everybody kind of knows what's going on. You, you know, you're just sort of revisiting the, the week one assignment. And I had really uh, uh, was really happy with what everybody did in week one. So I have a feeling that you're revisiting that, that you're not going to have too much difficulty figuring out what you want to do. You know, uh, but uh, this final assignment, bringing it all together, is really sort of a summation. Uh, I wouldn't really call it a quiz, but it's it's a way that we can find out if all of this stuff is kind of sunk in and become part of your your normal thinking. So um, the instructions that you download um, is the actual assignment itself. Uh, it's in three parts, and we want you to uh, Basically, read through each section and answer it directly. Um, and so I'm just going to take you through it and talk about it. Uh, one of the things is uh, because the questions are on the uh, instruction sheet, we made this particular um, PDF open so you can cut and paste from it. We don't want you to have to retype anything, but it's a good idea to, to include the questions in along with your answers when you... Uh, turn in your response. So um, I'm going to take you through it. There's three parts to this final assignment. Uh, the first part deals specifically with the nine elements of digital citizenship, which is um, uh, part of what you guys were having a discussion on last week. And if you remember this page, it basically gives you a, a clue as to what each one of these different elements is about. So you can be familiar with it. And, uh, you know, if you don't remember this page, I think it was in the uh, 3.2 discussion. I'll drop it in the chat there for you. But uh, this is a good page to bookmark, and, you know, until you actually can, can uh, be fairly fluent with the nine elements, uh, it's nice to have this to refer to. And so in part one, we've written nine statements, and each statement refers to a different element. And so we want you to match the term up with the statement. Uh, but it isn't just simply match the name. It's match the name and tell us why. So if all you ever do is match the term to the sentence and you don't give us a reason behind it, you're not going to really get full points on this section. Because uh, for, for this entire final assignment, our uh, main goal is to know why you made the choice that you did. Not that you got the right or the wrong answer. I mean, it's always important to get the right answer. But if you make the wrong choice for the right reason, that still helps us. So we're really looking into what your thinking is behind the choices that you're making. So we want you to match each of these terms up and then just give us a short sentence of saying why I think this is digital law or I think this is digital security. And in giving us that reason why, we'll know whether or not you're sort of absorbing this material. So part one's fairly simple. You, know, you just match it up and give us your reasons. Part two, uh, is about uh, sort of how you feel about different scenarios. And so we introduced this thing called the digital citizenship compass. You know, normal compasses point east, west, north, south. This one points to right or wrong, or maybe, maybe not, or I'm not comfortable with this. Different ways that you might feel about certain situations. And so we've given you seven different scenarios that we just want you to read they're sort of real-life scenarios that could happen to anybody at any point, and we want you to know how you react to it. And we want you just to give us your, your basic honest reaction. Don't necessarily get into a game of trying to think what we want you to think. We want you to feel any way you want about these scenarios. You can feel they're right or you can feel they're wrong or that you could not care. Uh, all of that is legitimate, but then tell us why. So... Um, in this case, you're going you're gonna to basically pick a point on this compass as your reaction to each one of these scenarios, and then we want you to explain in a couple of sentences, a short paragraph, why that was your choice, why you feel the way you do. And because we're really trying to figure out if the material that we dealt with this month uh, made sense to you, we're asking you to use in your responses the concepts, the terms, the videos, the articles, the stuff that you dealt with this month that informs that opinion. 
So if you just sort of tell us how you feel and say, well, I've always felt that way, and you don't reference the class, you're not really helping us at all. And you're not really giving us <clears throat> what we want as a complete or full answer. So uh, again, you can have whatever re reason or um, response to these scenarios you want, but that reason for that response should reference the material that we're dealing with this month as a way of informing your judgment. So uh, this is about reacting scenarios. Part three is a series of problems that are, you know, uh, you might have to solve. And uh, instead of reacting to it, we want you to kind of make a plan. We want you to say, this is how I would go about solving this. And again, because it's uh, meant to line up with what we were dealing with this month, uh, you know, there might be a certain way of searching for information or using geolocation or different other kinds of things you learned about this month that would help you solve these problems. So in telling us your answer, we want you to reference the material that you learned this month or can think about this month that helps to inform your answer. And again, you can solve this in any way you want. And you're not asking you to do any of this stuff. We're just asking you to make a plan for how you would go about doing it. But read through the scenarios and figure out what your plan of attack would be. Now, if you're uh, familiar with all the material this month that you know, you've already absorbed it all, you can pretty much go through this without referring back to anything, and it wouldn't take you more than an hour, hour and a half to do this. So while this is the main assignment for the month, it's not uh, of the week. It's not really that taxing. Uh, now, if you feel like you want to go back and reference old material, everything from the month is available to you. So even though assignments close off and you can't submit anymore when it comes Sunday at midnight, you can still access any of this stuff. You can read through the discussions. You can download any of the old instructions if you threw them away. Uh, you can watch any of the videos. So if you need to, this is kind of like an open book quiz. Uh, but if you already remember everything, then all you need to do is react to the material here. And, and that's fairly simple. And um, you can turn your answers or your, your, um, your assignment in in any form you want. And this, this time, you know, last week we said you had to be an online presentation. This week it can be uh, a regular file, it can be an online file, it can be a document, it can be a presentation. It's your choice. Uh, this is really a, a series of written responses. So to me, it makes the most sense that you just make a written document. And if you'd like to make a Google Doc and point me to that, that's fine. Uh, if you'd like to make use Word, uh, you can point me to that or, or drop that in as a file. You can, uh, you know, because the uh, the assignment sheet has this drag and drop, you feel like you want to turn something in. So that's sometimes simpler. And one thing I would notice is that even if you're creating a Google Doc, um, let me just load a Google Doc real quick. Um, whenever you have one of these documents loaded up. So uh, here's somebody's uh, misinformation debate. Uh, from the web page, if you want to have an actual file, the file menu has a download as uh, option. And you can create uh, a Word doc, an open uh, document, uh, a rich text file, a PDF, a plain text file, a web page. You can export stuff straight off of an online document. So you don't actually have to point me to the web page if you wanted to create something in Google Docs, but you wanted to turn in a, a, a Word document, you can export a Word document straight out of Google Docs. So that's certainly something that you could do. Uh, another thing, because sometimes people have a little bit of trouble cutting and pasting from PDF files, I made a, uh, a new document that I added to the downloads. There was only two downloads here before, but just right before I started the broadcast, I added this uh, file here, which is really just all the, the, uh, the parts of the assignment copied. Uh, you know, if I open this up, um, make a copy of it over here. Uh, this is what it looks like. So basically, I just copied and pasted the three sections that you're supposed to respond to so that you don't have to uh, retype any of this stuff. But if you want to download this doc from the web page, you can use this to turn in your homework. You, you could basically just open this up in a Word doc or any, any uh, uh, 
text edit would open this. Anything will open this up. And you can just uh, begin to type and type your responses. So I basically copied the material here and just left the space for you to respond. Uh, and uh, so if you want to put your name on it and drop that back in, that's one way that you could turn in your homework. You're not, you don't have to. I'm just making that as an option. But um, some people, you know, really like making presentations and they end up uh, doing this as a presentation. But uh, the actual format of it is a series of questions that you're responding to. So I would say that a Word doc makes, you know, the most efficient use of your time. But uh, do it however you like. And uh, it's not due until Sunday night. But uh, I highly recommend that everyone just go ahead and get it done in the next day or two because it's not going to take that long. And that'll give you the weekend free so that uh, you can kind of clear your head before you start the next class. Uh, I got the week three grades out, so everybody should be able to check their grades and know that they're on a path to pass and not have to worry about it. Grades for, for this week's assignments won't get done until the middle of next week while you're already in your next class. But you should already have a, a pretty good faith knowledge that you're, uh, whether or not you're going to pass. And if you're not, you can get a hold of me and I can, I can uh, give you a little uh, finer clue as to, you know, uh, whether your, your week four assignments are going to make or break you or not. Anybody that's worried about that can just contact me. Another thing I'll mention is that I'm going to be out of the office tomorrow and Thursday, uh, tomorrow and Friday. Uh, I have another teacher watching the web pages, but I'll also be uh, checking in and uh, answering my email. So if anybody has any questions, that's fine, but I'm not actually going to be in the office tomorrow or Friday, so uh, I'll let you know about that. I'm going to have a video of this presentation up in about an hour, and I will have a video of the uh, this week's global session up as well. So both of those will be uh, on view in uh, 4.1 uh, per usual. So if you need to uh, refer back to any of this stuff, that should be fine. Uh, so that pretty much covers it. Uh, I'm going to turn off the recording now.